Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about axial force diagrams and torsion diagrams. So, by splitting, as a review, by splitting a body at a specific point and performing an equilibrium analysis, we can find the internal forces and internal moments at that point. Uh, so, if we want to look at a second point, we need to do a second analysis. Uh, often, however, it's not going to be obvious where internal forces or moments are going to be at their highest. Uh, and we want to know where they're the highest because that's where it's most likely to break. And we may want to look at several possible points. So a graphical approach can be used to plot the normal forces, plot the shearing forces, plot the torsional moments, or plot the bending moments along the axis of the body, allowing us to easily pick out these maximum values. So that's what we're going to be talking about here. Um, so in a column or cable, uh, we can sometimes use some, we can use some simple rules to plot out the internal axial or normal forces. We, in a shaft, we can use some simple rules to plot out the internal torsional moments. Uh, and what I'm talking about here is uh, the normal forces. So this is these forces along the axis of the beam. Uh, it'd be either tension or compression. And then the torsion is going to be about that same axis, so the moment about that axis, rather than the force. Uh, both of these have separate applications, but the rules in each case are very similar, so we're going to talk about them together. All right, so with the axial force diagrams, let's start there. So axial force diagrams that is going to plot out the internal normal forces, again, the tension or compression along the length of the column, the cable, or other body that's supporting multiple forces uh, along the direction of that body. Uh, so imagine we've got some beam, We've got forces at A, B, C, and D. All of those are acting along the length of the beam. Uh, imagine I want to know the forces at the internal forces at cross section A. Uh, well, I could look at the right half of this, figure out what is that internal normal force. Well, instead, if I want to know B, I would have to do a second analysis. Uh, I draw out the free body diagram, set up my equilibrium equation, solve for this internal force over here at B. Um, so you can see. Doing this one point at a time is a bit difficult. Uh, what the axial force diagram is going to do is it's going to plot out what is the magnitude of this normal force as we move from point A uh, across the whole length of the beam over to point D. All right, so how do we create this axial force diagram? Uh, just as with the prior methods, the first step is plotting out the internal axial force uh, to plotting out the internal axial forces to determine all of the external forces acting on the body. So unless we know the magnitude of all those external forces, we can't make the plot. So for example, here we've got a column. This is a main support column in a building. Uh, so the roof is 10 kilonewtons. I've got 20 kilonewtons from each of the floors uh, that it's supporting above it. Uh, I need to know what is that normal force and kind of do a simple statics problem to figure out that's going to be, well, 50 kilonewtons um, before I go further. All right, next step. Once you determine the external forces, you're going to draw the body horizontally. We're going to rotate if necessary. So I'm taking my column. I'm going to put it on its side here. Uh, it's going to make plotting easier. Um, and then below that, you're going to draw a set of axes lined up below the body. So the x-axis represents the location. Uh, it's going to be lined up with the diagram above. Uh, and the y-axis represents the internal force at that location. Positive numbers represent internal tension. Negative numbers represent internal compression. So here I've got my force and location plot. I've got my axes set up. All right, so to fill out the diagram, uh, you start at the left and start at zero. So we're going to start over here at the origin point. Uh, and as we move to the right, we're going to jump upwards by a given amount uh, for forces to the left and jump downwards by an amount for forces to the right. Uh, so for example here, I would start at zero immediately right at the beginning. I hit that 10 kilonewtons to the right. Uh, right means I'm going to go down. So I go until I get to the next location where the next force is. There I hit 20 kilonewtons to the right. So I'm going to jump down an additional 20 newtons. That would bring me down to negative 30. That goes until the next point where the force is applied. That force uh, is another 20 kilonewtons to the right, it'll bring me down another 20 to negative 50. So I get to the very end of the column, uh, and you should always wind up back at zero by the end. So that 50 kilonewtons to the left, that means I should jump up 50 kilonewtons, which brings me back to zero, which is what I want. 
So this plot down here is the axial force diagram. It shows me the internal tension or compression in the beam as I move left to right. Uh, I'd have to imagine rotating it back uh, the way it was uh, to get the um, forces as it stands vertically. Uh, but I can see that I've got 10 kilonewtons here. Uh, negative is compression. So 10 kilonewtons of compression in this first section, 30 kilonewtons of compression in this second section, and 50 kilonewtons of compression in this third section. So I've got one, two, three possible cross sections, and my plot is showing all three of those internal forces, internal normal forces. All right, next up, let's talk about torque diagrams. Uh, so a torque diagram plots out the internal torsional moment along the length of a shaft uh, or other body that's supporting torques. Um, so usually we do this with some sort of shaft that's got lots of gears on it, so one input, two outputs in this case. Um, if I imagine making a cut at cross-section AA, uh, kind of do my traditional method, I'd have some internal torque uh, that is um, in the shaft. So this is going to be the load on the shaft itself. Uh, if I want to make a second cross-section over here at B, I'd need to do a second diagram, or I can just set up my torsion diagram. So how do I create this torque diagram? Um, just as with the prior methods, again, uh, we need to determine all the external moments in the shaft. We need to have everything defined uh, for those external moments. So figure out what are all the moments on the shaft. So here I've got uh, three moments uh, and the directions of those moments clearly defined on a shaft. Uh, once you determine the external moments, you're gonna draw the half, uh, shaft horizontally rotate if necessary. So our shaft is already horizontal, so we don't need to rotate it in this case. Uh, and then we're gonna put a set of axes lined up below the body. So the x-axis represents location. Again, it lines up with the uh, body. And then the y-axis in this case is the torque uh, in the shaft. So the positive numbers represent moments vector, moment vectors in the positive x direction. Uh, so you're gonna use your right hand rule here uh, so curl your finger in the direction of the torque. Uh, your thumb is the direction of the moment vector. So we would, uh, again, positive numbers represent moments in the positive x direction. Negative numbers represent moments, vectors in the negative x direction. All right, so that's what this represents. So to fill out your diagram, you're gonna start at the left at zero, just like we did with the axial forces. And as you move to the right, you're gonna jump upwards by a given amount for negative moments. So these are opposite. So a negative moment causes a positive jump. Uh, and we're gonna jump downwards by a given amount for a positive moment. So a positive moment causes a negative jump in our diagram. A little bit counterintuitive, but these, remember these are internal, these are opposing those external forces. So if I look at my diagram here, uh, what I do, I'd start at zero and immediately I have a positive five kilonewton meter moment there. So positive five means I should jump down uh, five in my diagram. Uh, then I get to the next point, I've got 15 kilonewton meters. That is a negative moment. Uh, so my thumb's pointing to the left if I use the right hand rule. Uh, so negative 15 means I jump up 15. So negative five up to positive 10. Um, and then at the end, I've got another positive moment, but a positive moment means I jump down in my diagram, so I jump down 10, and we should always wind up at zero just like we did with the axial force diagrams. So jump back down to zero there. All right, so that's all we have for the axial diagrams and torque diagrams. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.